Hi guys, Nain here and welcome to my April book haul. So today, this is very exciting, I have this parcel and I think I know what it is. I think it might be a box set. It's also one in the morning so I should be kind of quiet. But I want to film this because I want to open it and start reading. Okay, well that's kind of annoying because it implied that it was going to come with the box but still, at least I have the six part parts to it now. So this is Death Note uh, by Sugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata editions one to six and I've already read one. And I already had three, so I'm going to give those to Bex, and then I'm going to read the rest of them. Although I guess I won't display them in a fancy box set. Nyeh. I have a parcel, you will be pleased to hear. And it looks book-shaped. So this is Are We Nearly There Yet? by Ben Hatch. A family's 8,000 mile car journey around Britain. So this is obviously um, non-fiction. I guess this is, uh, yeah, from the East Riding of Yorkshire Library and Information Service. Withdrawn from stock. I'm going to read you the blurb for this, I think, because that's probably the best way to give you a feel for it. So, they were bored, broke, burned out and turning 40. So when Ben and his wife Dina were approached to write a guidebook about family travel, they embraced the open road, ignoring friends' warnings. One of you will come back chopped up in a bin bag in the roof box. Featuring deadly puff adders, Billy Piper's pyjamas and a friend of Hitler's, it's a story about love, death, falling out, moving on and growing up, and 8,000 misguided miles in a Vauxhall Astra. So yeah, just thought it sounded interesting. It's been on my uh, like wish list for quite a while now. And uh, yeah, I finally figured I'd buy it and get to it at some point. Okay, I have a guest unboxer with me today. Don't I, Biggs? You're going to help me? What do you think it is? You're going to grab it? No, you're just going to nuzzle. Okay, well this is... Uh, ooh. Appetite for Reduction, 125 Fast and Filling Low-Fat Vegan Recipes by Isa Chandra Moscovich best-selling author of Veganomicon and uh, basically this is because uh, because Bex has been in hospital she now has to be on like a low-fat diet so um, so I thought I would f <laughs> this is getting, descending into anarchy so I thought I'd find a vegan cookbook that um, that I could make that would uh, basically suit us both I mean and I'm down for some like low-fat stuff as well so Biggie get your tail out of the way Jesus Hello, the cat's here as well. Uh, we both say hi. Uh, I don't have my microphone, so we're going back to the old onboard camera for this. Uh, my microphone broke, so I need to order a new one. But I have some books that came in the post, and I also did a bit of charity shopping uh, with my mum when my mum came to visit. So let's see what we've got here. Okay, here we have Dr. Paul White, The Vibrant Workplace, Overcoming the Obstacles to Building a Culture of Appreciation. So this is one that I'm gonna be reviewing, sort of, well, it's more doing like a Sparknote style summary for a, for a client of mine. So I have that. Okay, so this is Daniel Coyle, The Culture Code, The Secrets of Highly Successful Groups. And again, this is one of these uh, ones that I'm gonna be doing a, sh a short Sparknote style review of. Uh, they actually, uh, they're called Open Source Workplace and they have a uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, yeah, you know, go check that out if you're interested in the reviews that I'm writing because some of the things that they're posting are like animated versions of my uh, reviews, which are very cool. Where are you going? Oh, I see. Okay, uh, let's do, these ones are more convenient, so. So this is the stack of books that I got today. So we have here, The Ladybird Book of the Hangover, which is very apt, and uh, this is by, I believe, uh, J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris. So these are some of like the, uh, um, like parody versions of the old Ladybird's books for kids. And I also got The Ladybird Book of the Sicky as well. So uh, those should be quite quirky, quite fun. I got, uh, Max Brooks, World War Z, or World War Z, I guess, if you're American. And uh, I have seen the movie of this, actually. I've also read his uh, zombie survival guide, but I haven't read World War Z, and it's been on my uh, my like wish list for quite a while now. Quite a few of these are on my wish list, actually. So this one was, for example, so classic adventures according to Spike Milligan. So I guess it's Spike Milligan, and he talks about He's got Robin Hood, Frankenstein, Hound of the Baskervilles, Treasure Island, and Black Beauty, which uh, the only one of those I haven't read is Robin Hood, actually. But um, yeah, I, I'm interested to see what he makes of it all. Here we have one I've been trying to track down for ages. This is The Dark Half by Stephen King. Uh, and it's got this really cool inside as well. I love this. Like super bright orange, which is... I, I like kind of bright, gaudy colours, I guess. So um, yeah, this is pretty cool. And it's quite a, like an old edition. I wonder which edition it is, actually. <laughs> the author's note, I'm a date... A, I'm indebted to the late Richard Bachman for his help and inspiration. This novel could not have been written without him. And Richard Bachman was his pseudonym. And I believe he died of cancer of the pseudonym. 
<laughs> that's how we killed him off. All right, so I'm really excited to get to that because it's meant to, like it's like a a lot of Stephen King fans say it's one of their favourites. So really want to get to it. Here we have Chuck Palahniuk, Paul and Nick. I don't know how to say it. Tell all. And uh, yeah, I mean he's just one of those authors. I'm trying to read read all of their books. Don't know what it's about. I know the dark half is about like a writer and his pseudonym. Here we have Alan Bennett, four stories, so it actually has The Laying On Of Hands, The Clothes They Stood Up In, which I've already read, Father, Father, Burning Bright, and The Lady In The Van, which I've also already read. But um, the other two stories I haven't read, and both of those are on my wish list, so I figure I can get that, and, and that's nicely done. Most of these from charity shops as well. We have The Power by Naomi Alderman. This is just a big sort of booktube favourite, but also, like from what I understand, it's dystopian. Uh, is it not? Oh, it's not dystopian. It's, I'm, I'm, I've been thinking of something else. I've been thinking about the one where, uh, where women only have a uh, hundred words a day that they can say or whatever. I don't know. I, I, everyone on BookTube talks about this book anyway, and it sounds, from what I've heard, like I, I'm, I'd, you know, I'd be interested in it. And then we have Mort Terry Pratchett, a Discworld big comic. Now I didn't even know these exist uh, or existed. But it's so cool, it's like a graphic novel of, uh, of Moore, published in 1994, as Death. I'm just, uh, and Moore is one of my favourites, certainly my favourite early Terry Pratchett Discworld novel. It was the first point, like, chronologically in the Discworld where I was like, yes, like, I, I, you know, he's, he's got it, you know? Here we have, speaking of Terry Pratchett, this was from the works. Terry Pratchett, Aiden abetted by the Discworld Emporium, the complete Discworld Atlas. Uh, of general and descriptive geography, which contains together with new maps and gazetta forms a complete guide to our world and all it encompasses. So yeah, and this includes this. Oh my god, this is massive. I'm not even going to open this up because it's going to... Anyway, it comes with this big old map. Uh, and then also it's got this book which is like non-fiction about all the different, you know, locations. So that's that pile. We've just got a few more. Let me bigs. Just a few more. So these were from uh, Hugh and Manor, which is like a national trust place. It's got a really interesting history behind it. Um, but they have a second-hand bookshop there as well, so I picked these up. So I've got Peter James, The Perfect Murder. Honestly, I picked this up because I'm slowly working through all of Peter James's books. If you look at it, he's got a YouTube channel called Peter James TV. And uh, if you look at the background on one of his videos, Driven is there because I sent it to him, which is quite cool. But yeah, he's like sold, I don't know, 18 million books or something. Stop me arwin, I'm recording. <laughs> Then we have, I don't even know how to say this guy's name, is it Colm Toibin? The Testament of Mary. To be honest, I picked this up because it, it's super thin and I've heard good things about the author, so I thought, why not? Like, with something like this thin, it's a great way to try a new author. And also it's shortlisted for the Man Booker, not that I care about awards, but you know. Here we have Lynn Truss, Talk to the Hand, so she wrote Eat, Shoots and Leave. She also wrote another book, which uh, the name of it I can't remember now, but it was... Uh, oh, uh, no, no. Oh, oh, Making the Cat Laugh, that was it. And I, I really enjoy like her writing style and her sense of humour, so I saw this and was like, I've got to get it, you know. Here we have The Vampire's Revenge by Willis Hall. This is about a vampire, uh, a vegetarian called... Uh, a vegetarian vampire called Count Alucard, which is Dracula backwards. And I used to love these books when I was a kid. And I actually, I picked it up and showed it to my mum. And I was like, do you remember when I used to read these? And she could remember as well. And I, I do have the first book in the series. But um, yeah, I didn't have any more. So I'm, I'm excited to read that. Then we have Alan Bennett, The Uncommon Reader. And... Uh, I really don't know what this is, to be honest. I just know, again, Alan Bennett's one of these authors who I've got all of his books on my wish list, so I'm um, slowly but surely getting through them all. And finally, we have Origin by Dan Brown. I'm not a massive Dan Brown fan, but I have read, like, I've read all of his books apart from this one and, like, the last one, I think. And I do have the last one, Inferno. Um, I, I think I think I haven't missed any others, but I don't know. And, yeah, I just saw this and it was, like, £2, but it's a nice hardback, so... I figured, screw it, why not? Uh, yeah, I'll get to them eventually, just not in any immediate rush. Hello! Uh, oh, I'm wonky. I have wet hair. Oh, I'm wonkier. I have wet hair today because I've just been in the shower. Uh, it's early in the morning. I haven't really slept 
it's been manic, work has been crazy and all this stuff. Um, but I got two books the other day from the Tesco Book Exchange. So the first one is The Comedians by Graham Greene. And this is, uh, yeah, so three men meet on a ship bound for Haiti, uh, awarding the grip of the corrupt Papa Doc. So that'll help to kind of give you the uh, time zone of the setting for this one. It's been on my like wish list for ages. Graham Greene is one of my favourite authors. And I finally saw this and I've, you know, I've been looking out for it for years. So I had to pick it up. And then I also just got this, Cat at Home by Kirsty Seymour, your, your, U-R-E, your, and yeah, it's just cats and quotes. So I'm probably going to read this next because it's nice and short. Alright, uh, I've got to get back to work. Hello, I got a parcel. Open here. I, w I would if I could. <laughs> ah, I see. This is Every Part of the Animal by Duncan Ralston. There is no limit to what a mother will do to protect her child. And Ralston is an indie writer, so I'm going to read this for Tarden Danes. Indie read along. And uh, I've actually just picked up Video Nasties by Ralston as well. So, uh, yeah, very exciting. Cool. Hello. Um, I'm really tired. It, it's, uh, it's ten past ten in the morning, which is... Usually I'm it's like still in bed at this point. But um, I didn't really sleep. I got like two hours. Anyway, I have some books though. We got some books. Oh my god, they're heavy. Okay, so uh, this is mostly from like once a month I buy some books um, online that are from my wish list. Uh, like as a little treat for myself. Okay. So here we have Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar's World War by Ollie Jacobs. So this is the latest Kirk Sandblaster book. It's actually been out on Kindle for a little while, but it's only just come out in uh, the uh, paperback edition. And I'm super excited about it because I've read, I think, five or six now of the uh, Kirk Sandblaster books. And Ollie Jacobs is an indie author, so I'll probably read this for Tarden Danes. Indie read along. All right, so here we have Tom Wolfe, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test. And basically, this is about um, Ken Casey, who wrote, who wrote uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Him and like his like extended crew of just hangers-on, I guess, they, they got this bus and just went around and took loads of LSD in the 1960s. And uh, so this is about that, basically. I'm quite excited about it. Heard really good things. It's supposed to be fascinating. Very cool. This is Terry Pratchett, The Witch's Vacuum Cleaner. These are just some more of his collected sort of short stories. Is that uh, Quentin Blake? I think it's Quentin Blake who's illustrated this by the looks of it. No, the illustrations are by somebody called uh, Mark, Mark Beach, but they look a lot like Quentin Blake. Uh, yeah, really cool. Excited to read this. And then finally, I think I know what this one is. So I saw this one on Madman Reads and Rocks' channel, on Ryan's channel. Uh, this is Darth Vader and Son by Jeffrey Brown. And it's just like a cute little kid's book, uh, I guess, but like an entertaining one. Uh, so I think you can kind of enjoy it as an adult as well as a child, I guess. Oh, it slipped a little bit there. Come on. That'll do. Sort of in shot. It doesn't matter too much. We're not professionals on this channel. We just we just do our best. Okay, uh, I've got a book that came in the post. Uh, we will see what it is. Oh damn! It is Agatha Christie, Double Sin, and other stories featuring both Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. So I am pretty excited about that. Although, what the hell is that creepy ass doll thing on the cover? What? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean it's short stories I guess. Oh, The Last Seance is in, oh, Greenshaw's Folly, I think I've read that one. I had this conversation with my uncle over, uh, I think it was over Christmas, where we were talking about the different Christie books, and he says he's noticed that I read a lot of, because I've got her, I've just marked her full bibliography as one to read. So that includes like American and British uh, editions, and there are some like American editions that were never out in the UK, some UK ones that were never out in America, and vice versa. So a lot of the the books that I've been reading, especially the short story collections, have have duplicates. So this has got Greenshaw's Folly, which I think I've read. I don't recognise the names of any of the others. We've got Double Sin, Wasp's Nest, The Theft of the Royal Ruby, The Dressmaker's Doll, Greenshaw's Folly, The Double Clue, The Last Seance, and Sanctuary. Um, I am actually probably going to read some more Christie soon. I recently started a, a big old thick Stephen King book, so I think I might want some Christie after that as like a palate cleanser. 
Anyway, I've got those, and then I went charity shopping in Oxford. I only went into two shops. I went into one shop one day, one shop the next day. It's kind of my limit, because I'm I'm trying to get my TBR down to below 200, and I believe this is going to push me back over 200 to, like, 204 or something. Um, so my new rule is when I go charity shopping, I'm trying to just do one charity shop a day. But let's go through them all. So we've got Five Go Down Under by Enid Blyton, although it's actually by Bruno. Oh, no, this is uh, Sophie Hamley. Although Bruno Vincent did write some of the other uh, five, go five, you know, five for adults books. So this is like a parody book, a recent one. And they go to Australia. That's all I know about it. That's all I need to know. I'm sort of slowly collecting these, especially from charity shops, because they tend to sell them cheaper in charity shops. So then we have uh, The Story of Houses and Homes. This is a Ladybird Achievements book. Uh, this is by Richard Bowood. Uh, and this is one of the original ladybirds. I'm not exactly collecting these, but I sort of am picking them up as and when I see them in the shops, you know? Uh, so yeah, just random uh, ladybird book there. Here we have, this is one's quite an interesting one, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. And it's, you can see that it's picking it up on the camera. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, and it's, uh, so it says here, we've got this really nice sort of paper uh, like this. And it's pocket sized. Uh, engravings by George Toot. It's uh, the Folio Society, and this was 49p as well, which for for Americans out there is like 60 cents maybe. And as you can see, it's you know, full text of the Raven. Now I did check it. Um, it's uh, buh, buh, buh. it's on Japanese laid paper and bound in full moir silk. Now silk isn't vegan, <laughs> so I mean I, I don't know. I'm a bit different with books, I guess. Um, you know, I'm sure I've probably got one or two that have got like leather in them and stuff. So, uh, like, I try my best. However, I do already have the Raven. I picked this up just because it was beautiful. But uh, my girlfriend Beck said that she liked it. So, I think uh, I think she's gonna have it because also she's not vegan. So, you know. Oh well, yeah, cool little find. Folio Society as well. Here we have uh, the Iron Man by Ted Hughes, Faber paper covered editions. And actually, again, speaking of Beck's, I think she's read this one and she said it was pretty good. I'm sure Miriam uh, from Between Lines and Life, if she's watching, I don't know actually if she's still watching my videos, but um, and she's on hiatus, unfortunately, as well. But uh, I'm sure she's read this. I feel like Chrissy from Chrissy Books and Berries has read this as well. Um, and I think I, I read The Iron Woman, which was poetry, but don't quote me on that because I might be wrong. We have Agatha Christie, Why Didn't They Ask Evans, which I feel like, I don't know why I said that like that. I feel like it was maybe published under another title. I don't know. Uh, if Mara from Books Like Woe is watching this, I'm sure she will let me know. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, this is marked as want to read on my list. So I'm guessing I haven't read it. Unless it's the same, because it's something to do with golf. So I'm like, is that, is it, it's, it's not just Murder on the Links, is it? Because I have read that one. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, more, more Agatha Christie. Here we have Puffin Classics, Mark Twain, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And I have wanted to read this for a while, and also Huckleberry Finn. I haven't read either of those. I have read The Prince and the Pauper by um, Tom Sawyer, uh, by, <laughs> by Mark Twain. Getting the author and the character confused there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, funny enough, I was talking about this with Bex on Saturday, and then I saw this on Sunday, so I was like, well, I've got to get it, especially for 99p. So, uh, yeah, got that. These are all Bex related. It sounds like I'm obsessed. This is uh, Steeper Out in the Cold, sorry, Sleeper Out in the Cold by uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. And the reason I picked this one up, apart from the fact that it's a graphic novel, and, oh no, it was it was four pounds. So actually it was more than I thought it was. But uh, Ed Brubaker wrote uh, another graphic novel that she got to, got for me on like, I think our second date, because um, we did like a book exchange. So um, yeah, that was cool. So I, I thought, why not? Uh, oh, here we go. We've got a shout out for Madman Reads and Rocks now. So this is, uh, Jeffrey Brown, Vader's Little Princess. And you will remember early in this video, which for me is like a week ago, I bought uh, Vader and Son. So then I saw this in the shop and was like, if I don't get this, I'm going to regret it. So so I had to get that for, for like two pound. Uh, then we have Spike Milligan, Goodbye Soldier, which is the sixth and uh, as far as I know, the last volume in his War Diaries. I've read the first, I think like one and three or something. And I think I've got four knocking around, so I'm slowly going through them. I'm not a huge Spike Milligan fan, but I do quite like him, you know. This is actually by far the thickest of these as well. Some of the other ones have been, like, this thick. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, should be good. Should be good. And I, I, I mean, I find war stuff interesting in general as well. And actually, I think Spike Milligan's war stuff is my favourite Spike Milligan stuff. So, 
And finally, we have this this lovely edition here, Cambridge University Press of Antony and Cleopatra by William Shakespeare. I have to actually check whether I've got this or not, but this edition was so nice that I was like, I'm going to get this one anyway. And uh, if I do already have it, then my, my old edition can either go back to charity or I'll, I'll give it to Bex. I think it would go back to charity because I think she's got uh, the full Shakespeare. So, but yeah. So that is it for now, and on that lovely note, I am going to go and start reading these. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, I thought I'd do this freehand instead of using the tripod and camera because it is the end of a month. I'm actually filming this on May the 1st. Where has this year gone? So on that note, I have finished this month's wrap-up. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.